So uh, our speaker today is Delceo Baggio, uh, and his title is on representation of the Strigonian Nichols algebra. Please, Delceo, go ahead. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. I will talk about the representations of the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra. This is a joint work with Nicolas Andrusquier from Cordoba, Argentina, Sarai de la Flora and Diana Flores from Santa Maria, Brazil. Here is the outline of the talk. I divided the talk in two parts. In the first part, uh, I will try to explain uh, how Nicole's algebra is important to the problem of classification of point of algebras. Uh, I will go uh, review the, the definition of Nicole's algebra, and I present the Lestrigonian Nicole's algebra uh, by generators and relations. In the second part, I will present our results, they are basic two results. One of them is the simple modulus of the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra, and the other one is the parametrization of the point modulus. About notation, for us, K is an algebraic closed field of characteristic zero and denote the, number, the natural numbers and not include zero, and in zero, include the zero. IKT is the element of N0 between K and T, and IT are the natural numbers between one and T. In this talk, module and representation is the same, are the same, and also, uh, in both cases, means finite dimension. Okay. We start with this question. Why is the Nichols algebra? Uh, for our purpose, the answer is clear because Nichols algebra is one of the key to classify pointed hope algebras. So I try to explain uh, very fast uh, why this is a K, why Nichols algebra is a K in the problem of classification of point hope algebras. So I review um, some concepts and introduce some notation. So the six steps A, H, M, U, delta, epsilon, S, the nota hope algebra and G, GH are the group of group like elements of H. The core radical of a co algebra uh, is the sum of all simple sub co algebras. So it's clear that the group algebra that con where, where the group is the group-like elements, is contained in H0, the core radical. But when they are equal, we say that H is pointed. Okay. Other concept, we recall the core radical filtration. We define inductively HN with this pre image so we have a chain of coalgebras h0 contained in h1 etc and if h is pointed in this case h0 is kg this core radical filtration is in fact a whole algebra filtrations so we can consider it the graded of algebra associated to this filtration. So we have this. Here we have 
h minus 1, h minus 1 is 0, h1 is k. I'm sorry, h, h is h is 0, h minus 1 is 0, and h0 is, is kg. And we have two whole algebra morphisms. We have a projection P from GRH in H0 and an inclusion from H0 in the great whole algebra associated, such that the composition is identity. So this situation, we said that we have a diagram. In this case, we can reconstruct GRH as a bosonization or hard for byproduct or smash product. There are some names for the same thing. So for this, we need to take the subalgebra of coinvariance by P, given by this. And uh, we can see that R is not a hope algebra, but is a hope algebra in the category of the field modulus over G. This is a, a Brady tensor category. Uh, I recall what is this category. In the case of groups, is there is a characterization more, more easy. Uh, the elements, the objects of this category are KG modulus degraded, such that satisfy this condition. G acts in the component VH, and uh, the elements are in VG and G minus one. Note that the, the objects here are kg modulus, kg comodulus, and we have this compatibility and the, those structures. So this is classic. So we have that GRH is this bosonization. Our vector is, uh, as vector is space, R smash kg is the tensor product, but, but we have a multiplication, a multiplication, and this is in fact a whole function. Some properties of R, recall that R is the braided whole algebra of covariance elements by P. R is a great algebra, and is a braided whole algebra in this category, and the homogeneous elements in degree one is a yetter Greenfield model over G. So we can consider the Nichols algebra associated to V. It is denoted by BV. And we have the following conjecture, Andrews Kieft Schneider conjecture, that it's valid that BV is R, or equivalently, any finite dimensional point of algebra is generated in degree one by group likes and skew primitives elements. This conjecture was proved by Nicolas and Schneider for a large classes of diagrams. And more recently, it was proved for the diagrams of diagonal type by Ivan John. So here we have the, the steps that we use to classify point of algebras. Firstly, we need to classify vector spaces V such that V has finite dimension. Second, we need to give the presentation by generators and relations. And the last step is to compute the deformations or the liftings of the smash product. 
these are the three steps that we follow to classify point of algebras. So, in the case that BDV, BV has, has, has no finite dimension, we can, we can think the same strategy, but we replace finite dimension by finite Gelfand Kirillov dimension. For this case, we have some results. The classification is not yet complete, but in this paper, it's a paper from Nicolas and Johnny Heckenberger, they present several results about the classification. Our object, the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra, appears in this paper. Okay. Now, uh, I would like to, to review the definition of Nichols algebra. So that there are three, at least three equivalent definitions for Nichols algebra. Here I use the braided group, the art in braided group is more direct to present the definition. So what is a vector is a braided vector space is a pair a vector space V and a braid C. A braid is a, a linear isomorphism that satisfies the braid equation. For instance, we have the trivial braid, the flip. We have the a braid associated to super vector spaces given by this formula. We have braiding of diagonal type. In this case, we have a, a vector space with basis x1, x2, xn, and the braid is given by the braid between xi and xj is xj tensor xi multiplied by a, a, a non-zero scalar. And the last example is the group algebra. If you if you consider the group algebra over a, a group gamma, we can define the braid by the braid between X and I is the conjugation by X tensor X. It's the conjugation of Y by X tensor X. Okay. So uh, the art in braid group denoted by Bn. This is the group presented by generators sigma one, sigma n minus one, and relations. We have these two relations. These relations are the same relation that appears in the presentation of the symmetric group. But in the symmetric group, we have another relation that is tau e square is one. So it's clear that we have a projection of groups from Bn to Sn that sends sigma i in tau i. This projection, not admit uh, a section as group, but admit a section at set theoretical section. So we have mu from Sn to Bn that is almost multiplicative. This map is called Matsumoto section. And this is one of the ingredients that you need to define equals algebra. Okay. The other ingredient is the representation of Bn. Given a braid vector space, Vc, we define Ci by the following. Ci is 
we use the, the braid in the position i, i plus one to change the fix and the other positions are identity. So if you consider phi n from bn to uh, out of v tensor v n times, we have a representation of bn that sends sigma i in ci. Okay. Finally, uh, we can consider the quantum symmetrizer. The quantum symmetrizer Sn is given by this sum. We apply, we, we sum over OSN and we apply mu and phi n. Note that mu of sigma is an element of the braided group and sigma n is a representation. So we have an operator from v tensor v from tensor v n times. So we can consider the nucleo, the kernel of this, this operator. And the Nichols algebra is the quotient of TDV for the kernel of the quantum symmetrizer. Mm -hmm. But in the first two components, K and V, we now take the, the, the kernel only for any bigger than two, bigger or equal to. For instance, the second mm -hmm. symmetrizer mm -hmm. is identity plus C. The third symmetrizer is identity plus C1 plus C2 plus C1 C2 plus C2 C1 plus C1 C2 C1. C1 is C tensor identity, C2 is identity tensor C. So we observe that the quantum symmetrizer is, is a, a bigger operator <laughs> and to calculate the kernel is a hard problem and it's the reality to determine the, the Nichols algebra, it's a hard problem. In general, it's a hard problem. So I present some examples. If you take the, the usual flip, the Nichols algebra is the symmetric algebra. If you take the end flip, we have the stereo algebra. If you take the the super super vector space, we have a sum of uh, the symmetric algebra with the stereo algebra. Okay, now I would like to present the the object Lestrigonian Nichols algebra. So uh, let's let V the direct sum of two vector spaces, V1 plus V2. V1 has a basis X1, X2, and V2 has a basis X3. V1 is a block and V2 is a point. And consider this braiding. The braiding is given by this matrix. For instance, if you, if you calculate the braiding between X2 and X3, is Q X3 tensor X2. So I would like to observe that uh, we have uh, an scalar A that in some sense is somewhat, somewhat hiding here in the matrix is in the position two, three. I'm sorry, three, two. So if you call 
G menos 2A. In the paper, the authors call it this natural number that they assume this is an, a natural number. They call ghost. This element, this natural number, uh, determine in some sense if the if the braiding gives a Nichols algebra of gelfand kivilov dimension finite or non-finite. The scalar k is important too. So finally, I can. I can present uh, the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra. Let G the ghost and K a non zero scalar. The, the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra is present by generators x1, x2, x0, x1, x2, x ghost. X0, in fact, is uh, Z0, in fact, is X3. And we have the following relations. We have five relations. The first relation is the usual relation of the Jordan plane. And we have more four relations. This, okay. this algebra has very nice properties. Is a domain, has a PBW basis given by this, has Gelfand key love dimension three plus ghost because we have X1, X2. Z0, that is X3, and more G variables. Is graded. X1 and X2 are in graded 1, and Zn are in graded n plus 1. Is it strongly Netherian and is AS regular. Sorry. And the, what, yes. Sorry. Uh, the, what does strongly mean? Strongly Netherian. Strongly Netherian means that when you you do the tensor product with any uh, Netherian algebra, the tensor product is Netherian. Uh -huh. Okay, so it, I think, it's, I think a property, it's a property it has as an algebra. Yeah. Okay, no, it's not just a ring theoretic property. You need the... the ah, okay. okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Right. I put the, the property here because I use it uh, to describe the point models. We need this... this property. Okay, and the subalgebra A generated by x1, x2 is isomorphic to the Jordan plane. So now I go to the results. We have, in, the, in this work, we have it two main results. The first is the classification of simple, simple modulus over B. I call the, the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra by B because it's by simplified. Uh, consider the, the, the Hopf subalgebra generated by X1 and take the Hopf algebra quotient by the, the ideal generated by X1. So this is a whole algebra generated by X2 and Zn. 
that satisfies the relations three, four, and five. The relations one and two in, involve x1 and are trivial. So we have the following reduction. The set of non-isomorphic simple models of B are in bijective correspondence with the set of non-isomorphic simple models of D ghost. And the proof of this result is very easy because we consider a, a finite dimensional B modeling and take the kernel, and it is easy to prove the kernel is a submodel of V. And uh, consequently, the kernel is zero or V because V is simple, but the kernel cannot be zero because X, X1 is a new potent operator. So the kernel is all V. Okay. Now I will go to the second reduction. And after that, I return, I go back to the slides. The second reduction. Let V uh, a simple DG model. So we can prove that the action of ZG is zero on V. The proof of this result is more complicated, but use only linear algebra. So now I return, I go back here. So I need to recall the, the notion of the quantum plane and the, the simple representations of the quantum plane. The quantum plane is the algebra generated by X and I, two letters that satisfy this relation. Xi is equal to Ix multiplied by Q. If Q is one, we have the, the polynomials and in this case is commutative, and the, the simple modulus are one-dimensional. If k is not one, we have the quantum plane, and it is, in this case, we have three families of simple modulus. We have two families of one dimension, given by this, kax and kai, and we have a family uh, of dimension n given by this row. And the result, it's, it's very low. This, if V is a finite dimension, simple modeling over the quantum plane, such that dimension is one, then V is isomorphic to one of this family. And if dimension is bigger than one, then Q has order finite and, and we have that V is isomorphic to UAB. So with these results, we can present the first, first main result that we obtain. The, this theorem that gives the, the isomorphism between the, I'm sorry, not the isomorphism, but a bijective correspondence between the isomorphics simple models over B and the isomorphic simple models over the quantum plane. The proof is easy is trivially, is, is almost trivially because we we follow the two steps. 
let v a symbol be modular by the first reduction v is a dg simple moduli by the second reduction zg acts by zero so we can, we can take again the, co the quotient dg by the yield generated by zg and we call this dg minus one we repeat the process and obtain that the zg minus one is zero. And we repeat g times and the element zg acts by zero on v. So we have the quantum plane. Okay. Now I go to the second result. So let A, a graded A algebra connected and assume that the dimension of AN is finite for ON and that A is generated in degree one. What is a point model? A point model over A is a cyclic graded model, V, direct sum of Vn, such that the dimension of Vn is one for all n in n zero. The motivation behind the definition of point model comes from commutative projective geometry. Here I remember the notion of projective space We denote a point of the projective space with this notation. And let J be a homogeneous ideal of B and A the quotient ring. B is the polynomial, polynomial in n, n plus one variables. Consider the closed subset of P and K given by, we associate for J, this closed subset of the projective space. So the point modulus of A, the quotient ring are precisely the point models of B calculated by J. That is those point models B I such that J con such that I contain J. What is the conclusion? What is the conclusion? There is a objective correspondence between isomorphism class of point models of A and points in X. In this sense, X parameterize the point models of A. For the non-commutative case, there are graded rings that have nice parameter space of point models. So it, it is the case for the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra. Some remarks, I remember that uh, the notion of point models I introduced it by Chu. Uh, when A is, is strongly Netherian, then the point models for A are parameterized by a projective scheme. In our case, we have this assumption because the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra is strongly Netherian. So we have all ingredients to determine the projective scheme for the Lestrigonian Nichols algebra because we have a graded algebra that satisfies these conditions and we have that the Lestrigonian is, is strongly Netherian.
Okay. Here I present the parametrization of point models for a free associative algebra. The parametrization is given by this association. For each point model V, we have an infinite sequence of points in Pn. And the scalars that appear in each PI are the scalars that appear in the action of Xj on Vi. This is classic. So given an homogeneous element F of the polynomial ring in three variables, x0, x1, x2, let Vf the projective subvariate of P2 of zeros, zeros of F. Our result, the isomorphism classes of point modules over the listrigon nichols algebra are parametrized by these varieties, V, X0, X2. What means are the points of the projective space that are zeros of this homogeneous element, x0, x2. So the parametrization is given by V, uh, the association V point model to P0, where P0 is given by in theorema one. So reference, reference one and four, we use to Nicole's algebra, to representation of Jordan plane, reference four, to representation of the Jordan plane. Two, three, and five are reference related to point modulus. And uh, the last comment, is that we next step can be to consider other uh, examples of Nicole's algebra that has galvan of dimension finite and to try to determine the, the point models because we, we only use linear algebra, basic linear algebra linear algebra to determine the parametrization. And the other step is to understand how to use the geometry to obtain algebraic properties of the algebra. We need to understand this. So it's all. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Dirceu, for a wonderful talk. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Where do you use the characteristic zero assumption? The, the characteristic zero is used to calculate the Nichols algorithm. Okay, but can the Nichols algebra be defined in arbit over an arbitrary ring? Uh, yes, I think yes. Yes. Um, yes. And it's difficult to determine. But mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I. Suppose it's a matter of uh, we also require uh, algebraically closed, right? So it might be, I mean, uh, that uh, this is needed for the program that, uh, that I mean, for the, the Andrewskiewicz Schneider program, that the way you, you, 
the, the process to classify the algebra's needs these assumptions. But of course, no, it, no, it's no. given by, by generators and relations, you can define it over the ring. Right? No, no, the, the thing is that you, you need a presentation to work with the re, with re, representations and things like that. So mm -hmm. if you want to have the presentation by generators and relations, you know to to know some facts of Nikos algebra that you know if the characteristic is zero or in some cases in characteristic P. But in general, they are very difficult to determine the, the relations. You, the presentation, the, the definition of Nikos algebra is given by a, a quotient of the tensor algebra. So mm -hmm. you have to determine the kernel and to determine this kernel is, is quite difficult. In, in this case, in characteristic zero and in this case of prediction, it is possible, but in other cases it might be quite hard. Yeah, this is the only point. But you can work in any in any field. Okay, uh, it's hard to decide if the the Nichols algebra has finite dimension or not. It's a hard problem to decide, and to present the generator in the relation also. Uh, this uh, projected variety that parametrizes your uh, point representations, I mean, what is that? Uh, is it a union or two yeah. that projected lines or something? Yeah, it is the union of three things. Uh -huh. is, I don't remember exactly by a I think it's two lines with a point, something here. Mm -hmm. I can check. Here. So, uh, can you go back uh, yourself to the definition yeah. of DG? Because you kill something, and then mm -hmm. you, you say, okay, the, the irreducible representations are here, DG. Yes. Yeah, we take the ideal generated by X one, and take it, and take the quotient algebra. the The important thing here is that X one satisfies this relation. Oh, I'm sorry. The relation one. And by results of Natalia Judo uh, of Jordan plan, in this case, the action of X1 is new potent. Ah. Yeah. Here appears in the proof by lemma 21 of Natalia Judo, X1 acts new potently on every finite dimensional model. So X1 acts by zero. Uh, X1 acts by zero on V because the kernel cannot be zero. And the second step, ZG acts by zero. So we can take again the quotient G, G minus one and repeat the process. Zg minus one act by zero. Repeat the process. Zg minus two, zero. So we have the quantum plane. I, I, I don't see that. Why, why you have the quantum plane? You have the x2 and the set zero. x1 is zero. Zg x2, is yes. zero for all g. Yes. And C0, okay, I see it now. Yeah. Oh, ZG, yes, okay, I see it. The last one. Yeah. That's the point of view. Okay. Excuse but the, this, this model, this Lastrigonia model, is, is the direct sum of a simple model of dimension two and, and one of dimension one? I'm sorry, the, the simple models of the Lastrigonia? I know. No, it's, the, simple, it's the, the simple models are the simple models of the quantum plane. 
No, no, no. I mean the the Yeti rifle model is it is simple. This LQ one G. Ah, LQ one G. The simple models are one dimensional, I suppose. Yeah, are one dimension. Are all one dimension. And okay. And and why do you study point models? Why why this? It it was a suggestion of uh, Milian Jakimov. Jakimov. Yes. They uh, he he said this algebra, the trigonometric Nichols algebra, has has a structure interesting to 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 study point models to develop uh, algebraic geometry. So this is a suggestion of uh, Milian Jakimov. So we need to in the, to understand how to use the geometry for to understand algebraic properties. So this is the next step we need to study more. Uh, a general uh, philosophical question, I mean, um, if you have two algebras and you know that uh, they have the same uh, simple modules, uh, yeah. What does this mean? I mean, uh, I suppose, um, so if it has the same modules, okay, it's, they are more equivalent. Right? But if they have just, so, for, uh, uh, and also, um, I mean, a more, you said at the beginning that all representations were finite dimensional, right? So, is the category of finite dimensional representations over the algebras you study semi simple, so that if you know the simple ones, you know all? Or you, no. you need to know the indecomposable ones? So. Yeah. You need the indecomposable. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's very, very difficult to calculate the indecomposable. In some cases, yes, but in general, it's. So uh, I is I mean there is this um, I have a vague recollection that uh, simple representations. I mean that if you put all representations in 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 make a variety and other variety of them, then the simple ones correspond to those points or something like that. Is there such an interpretation? I don't know. So are there uh, any more questions from the audience? Captain? No, I no, know. I'm still thinking. So. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Okay, so we uh, stop the recording here.